What I have to do? Uh, I have to take a shim out of that. You know what I mean? It's one of them things that's that I've run. I've run the engine enough to, and I'll, I'll look at it again to see about the uh, the play. I probably, I probably should have a uh, a pry bar. Uh, I think this is all we need. And I done took that cover off there, you can see that. But. And I actually took a cotter. I done removed one of them cotters out of there. Uh, to. Uh. See, this is the second go around on uh, these shims here. But the, the problem is the the play the, the uh, let's see if I can do it. See how much play right up here? The the crankshaft. Uh, when the engine runs, it vibrates, so that means this bearing's about wore out. You can pick up on that out there, and I'm prying on it, and you can see how much that is. Okay, that's quite a bit. So I have to take them shims out in there. Well, uh, now, now that's on the, that's on the, uh, well, We'll have to see to that. Uh, that's different than this is in here. When when you see see when I turn that flywheel backwards and forwards, and I look at the imp in there, and I see that rod bearing edge of it and the crankshaft. Well, what I'm what, what and that that makes a loud pounding noise in these engines. So. And this one, uh, I put these in the other day, and, and I've already took a couple out working down to where it should be. And the, kind of the, the war so bad that kind of, it, it, it may, it'll just have the big shim in it, I think. Um, which means it could run a long time more on that setting until you would need a thinner shim. So, and that's what I'm gonna do today is take that part and slip one of them shims out of there and tighten up the amount that when I rock this, see, see when I rock that flywheel backwards and forth uh, down here where it's past dead center where I can see how much movement is between that. Okay, see that's a lot. It's too much ex excessive. If you have an engine that has that much play in it, then you should be sitting on a milk crate just like I am right now, uh, taking a shim out. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So, uh, well, that's quite a bit. Oh, it's wrong size.
See, it's got a tight thread on it. We'll have to take that completely out and see to that thread. condition of the bird, you know. Okay, uh, with the bird, uh, the, uh, well, it only has the thick one. So, Okay, on the bottom, it, it had a thick one and two thin ones. Okay, the, the thin one, one of them is, I'm like, one of them is like, I've measured these before. I think it's like four thousandths, possibly six thousandths, and these right here are like twelve or fourteen thousandths, somewhere in that range. That, that's how much I'm taking out. And, and that's not going to be enough in this situation. The, uh, because 
You, you, you have to put these two back in there to secure these two big ones. When you put that on there, that's what holds your bearing from spinning around. So we have to put them back in there. Uh, it is marked on, right there with a, with a dot. Uh, and that's the top. But I thought there was more shims in the bottom than what's showing up, so. Uh, well, yeah, we got another shim down there on that bottom. I'm not gonna, I'll have to take that bolt out anyway. No, that's, that's the rod right there. There ain't no shim on that. And we're good up on the top, too. So... But I'm going to take this bolt out there. Uh, I'm going to re-thread this bolt. I run a tap on that and, and a die and uh, make sure these goes back in there better than that. And, uh, and I'm going to put it back in there with the two big ones and just bolt it all back up just like I just done did it. talking about let's turn it to size now <laughs> 